Hey, hello again. This is video number eight of my Ultimate Ladybug course. If you haven't watched the other videos, I recommend that you go back. There's a lot to learn and it is, it's building up to this video. Uh, in specific, I would encourage you to watch the previous video, video number seven, where we talk about indoor thermal comfort. This video will also talk about the indoor thermal comfort, but a different tool. We Today we look at the PMV indoor comfort. The difference is that one is for a space which is not conditioned, no heating, no air conditioning. And the other tool is for spaces which are air conditioned. They have heating, cooling. Now, this video is a bit experimental still because we have no data for indoor, but we have other factors which we can take into account because thermal comfort is not, does not equal temperature. For comfort, there's two other very important components. Uh, there are several factors, but two more, two very important components, which is the humidity and the airspeed. The good news is that this video will be shorter because we already built up so much understanding that feeding into this, this tool will be fairly simple and uh, it's straightforward because we built so much already around it. All right, all right, let's jump in and we, I will just give a quick recap of what we did before and uh, then we can, we can build up the tool. All right, so as you remember, we looked into the outdoor, indoor th solar, oh, sorry, the indoor thermal comfort, the adaptive comfort. And what we put in here is the outdoor temperature. Then we put the air temperature. We don't know the air temperature really. So I was playing with different uh, factors. One is like a, one is like a fixed temperature. If we can, like, let's say, insulate that building properly and shade it or self shade, then we maybe reach a certain, you know, optimum. It's very unlikely that it just stays one, one temperature, but in order to test it, to test the tool, I put here the air temperature. You can also put just the outdoor temperature again. Um, by the way, with double click here, we can actually create a relay, which is pretty handy. And then we can just put here the air temperature and you can see it changes slightly, not really much. So there's actually slightly better, to be honest. We also had to put in here the mean radiant temperature, which results from the objects around the, the subject. And it's again, it depends on the location, the long wave radiation, uh, mean radiation temperature, radiant temperature, the directional normal radiation, the diffuse horizontal radiation, uh, sorry, direct nor normal radiation, diffuse horizontal radiation, the fract body exposure, uh, sky exposure. And we, we just played with uh, certain numbers here just to assume something. It doesn't change too much uh, if I change the numbers here. It's it's it stays relatively where where it's supposed to to be. I think we also had the adaptive parameters uh, where we can uh, decide which um, building standard is assumed, and we also had here the some solar body parameters. Is the person seated, standing? Um, what kind of clothing does he wear, and so on. And then we just plot everything uh, and then we can look at course of course on the temperatures or the comfort when we looked at the comfort we saw okay the, whatever is red here is comfortable and what what blue is uh, not and we can also look at the degree the neutral degree that means how far is it away from the optimum like for example here um the orange the deep orange is actually the closest to let's say the 21 between 21 and 23 degrees or let's say maybe 19 to 23 degrees that's the closest to it and then blue means it's 17 degrees too cold for that which is just in a very little just in very just very occasionally actually it's just one time a year in one hour all right so that basically um shows how we used the adaptive comfort with a very with very little with very little knowledge about the actual indoor temperature and with very limited data we don't have yet any building or uh, we just have the location the elevation um, and and uh, the climate data okay so now we look at the pmv comfort and we already put stuff in here the ladybug pmv comfort i'm just reading again the uh, definition for pmv pmv stands for predicted mean vote pmv is a thermal comfort model for use on the 
interior of buildings where a heating or cooling system is operational. For annual ventilated buildings, the adaptive thermal comfort model is recommended. And, and for outdoor conditions, models such as the Universal Thermal Climate Index or the physiological equivalent temperature are recommended. So it's a different model. It's for condition spaces. All right. What can we actually put in here? So we have the air temperature. Again, we don't know the air temperature indoors. That's, that's tricky. So let's talk about this. Uh, what can we input here? So I, I, let's, let's say I assume I have a, a building with a very efficient cooling and heating system and it makes sure that the temperature is always between 21 and 23 degrees. Let's assume that. It's very unlikely, but let's try it. So we have this temperature throughout the year. Well, the comfort is not just temperature. Comfort doesn't equal temperature. It equals temperature, humidity, and airspeed. And what you wear, how you move, or are, you, are you seating, standing, lying down, and so on. What else do we need here is the mean radiant temperature, which we already built for the previous, for the previous test, for this uh, adaptive model. And we can reuse that. I think we just reuse what we have here, so we, have a, we can compare, really. And... We just basically take this output here and place it in here. That's it. That's why. Watch the previous video. Uh, we need a run toggle. Toggle. Oh yes. Uh, by the way, so relatively relative humidity that we need that we can get from the um, weather data. Now you could have a condition, an air condition, which also regulates your humidity level. But let's say we don't have that. We have the same humidity level as outdoors. By the way, I'm not an expert in air conditions not at all i have actually have very little knowledge i just try to, but i probably will learn a lot here as well so we learn together airspeed because we're indoors i would say airspeed is very low but we can test of course um, different speeds i maybe put here 0 0.2 for a fan on a low power and actually we can already place that into a chart and we just use this po point here to place our chart um, I use again the hourly plot. I think this is the most um, useful at that point. Base point. We can take this, we just uh, create the base point where it should be and then also the data. So th there are different outputs. They, they are don't matching the output of that adaptive model. The different outputs here. So we have the PMV output, the predicted mean vote. PMV is a seven point scale from cold to hot. So we could use that. Um, there's also the, the percentage of people dis dissatisfied, <laughs> PPD, PPD, especially this is defined by the percentage of people who would have a PMV beyond acceptable thresholds. So it means like if it's too cold, they are not happy. Um, what else? We can go through that later. Uh, let's just choose one. I choose this one here, the PMV, which basically divides into six categories, seven actually with neutral. And we choose the point, set one point, that's what we chose. Now you can see here, okay, um, neutral, very similar to what we actually see here. Here, the orange is the, basically the most neutral and um, here the yellow is the neutral one. Then uh, we have this light blue, medium blue, slightly cold and so on, slightly warm. Here's, slightly warm is here the, the orange. What else do we have? The airspeed, let's, let's check what's here the... Um, the, de the default would be 0 0.1. Let's check if that changes a lot. Actually better. So it, in it already shows that the airspeed has quite an impact here. So it shows that probably don't want to have a fan running. Let's try a bit more. This tool takes quite long to calculate actually. So 0 0.1 is, is acceptable. This is like better. If no air mo movement, it's very unlikely. There will be always some air movement. That seems okay. The MET rate, we talked about this before, metabolic rate. Let's see where we used that before. I think we have that somewhere. Mm -mm 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 -mm. Yes, we used that. We actually used the metabolic rate in the pet comfort. So let's do that. So we go here. Um, mm -mm 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 -mm. So here we just basically, the metabolic rate is what would be... Um, it's the equivalent for this here, the posture, seated, uh, standing, or supine. And here it's the mat rate, it's just a number. So we could just, we can just leave that basically. We, let's assume the person is seated. So we have the same, um, the same as the posture here in this uh, option. 
And when you can when you read here, it says one met would be metabolic rate of a re resting seated person, 1.2 metabolic rate of a standing person, 2.4 metabolic rate person walking. And the default is 1.1, which is seated, working but seated. So let's, let's leave that. Then we can specify the clothing. Here the default is 0 0.7, which I guess it's okay. It's uh, 0 0.5 would be sh shorts and t-shirt and one would be a free piece suit. So uh, also that I think fits. And then we have the PMV parameters. Let's check that out. PMV parameters. Uh, we looked at this before. I think the PMV parameters actually override some of these. Ah, uh, there's a clothing list also. That's pretty interesting. See, you can actually be super specific of what the person is wearing and that gives you the the, uh, the output number. So for example, in my case, I I wear, I have underwear. I don't have socks on, sorry. <laughs> don't see it in the video, but I don't have socks on. I don't have shoes on. I have a t shirt, short sleeve shirt, hmm. sweatpants, no, skirt, coat, no. So that would be my output. Let's see. I guess you need to summarize, uh, sum this up. Okay, that means some mass addition and 0 0.43 would be my clothing parameters. Let's put this in here if we already have it. Okay, that changes a bit quite dramatically actually because I probably because I don't wear socks. What if I change this here? T-shirt, long sleeve dress shirt. It's for example, I wear a vest. Okay. Hmm. Yeah, it 0 0.5 shorts and T-shirt. It's not completely, uh, it's a bit, I would say, this is probably more correct uh, than just putting a number, but good to know. I haven't uh, actually looked at this before. So now we have this as well. So the PMV parameters. Okay, let's check it out. PMV parameters, where are you? It's this one. I'm just showing it here that you can input this. Uh, it's not um, It's not required, but it just adds something if you need if, if needed. Here you can specify the threshold when people get uh, are not happy anymore. And the still air threshold. For, this is basically can set an upper limit and a lower limit. So I I don't change anything here. So the threshold is set to 10. Um, default is one for upper limit. You can read through that and uh, you can see if that makes sense to you. Create a set of parameters that define the acceptable conditions of the predicted mean vote thermal comfort model. These parameters can be plugged into any of the components that compute PMV thermal comfort. All right, now that's our model. <laughs> that's it. So of course we can look now a bit more in detail what's happening here. We could compare, uh, for example, here the neutral temperature Oh no, that we don't need that. Uh, sorry, let's compare the comfort. People are comf comfortable or not? I think it's overlaps. Quite. Here's just more detailed where we know. Okay, it's neutral, slightly warm, slightly cold. This would be still acceptable. Uh, whatever is outside that that numbers that would be then not acceptable. It's never really too hot, which is quite interesting. That. I'm struggling a bit because it's um, maybe because of the elevation, maybe because it's a rain, rainforest kind of or like yeah, I, I I'm struggling a bit. It is very high up. That that is true, for, uh, definitely. Now we could also check the temperature. If the temperature, let's say we have 23 degrees inside, or the temperature is 27, it seems like that actually changes the overall. So let's say it's 25 degrees inside. It's actually pretty good. There's no areas which are too, way too cold. It's just a little bit here that we had the same here, I think. If we look into the adaptive model, yeah, this is here, this in August, this spot here. It's similar, very similar. Again, just make sure that you understand this is without air condition and heating. This is with air condition and heat, cooling and heating. Now, if we would be able to control the humidity that, um, that might also change this dramatically. So if we now, let's say, let's let's put here something else. So the humidity has, depends um, if it's too much. This is by, by the way, percentage, air humidity. Less humidity means some, some at some time it's actually much cooler, especially here in the, in the morning before the sun comes up. We can also, instead of like, let's get this back here. 
Now we should do relays. It's much easier. Okay, the relays. Double click creates a relay. It's really good. Um, we could also create an average of what's in here. That's also possible. For that, we need to separate, uh, deconstruct the data first because we have headers and values in here. So we own in the values. And if you see here, ooh, so there's always quite a high humidity. So we could uh, create an average of this average values. So the average humidity is 74. It's quite high. And that we could also put in here. If you then want to change that, you can, for example, have a factor here and say, how much does my air condition reduce that? Um, could have like here, for example, a, a number slider with where I can put the factor for this. I cannot have more than 100%, by the way, but you, I think you know what, I, what I'm trying to say here. Be more specific, it's just two maximum. You can also set this, set the, the maximum here with this minimum. Uh, it basically makes sure that you never go over this. So you could um, do this. I'm just playing around now, really. Sorry for that. <laughs> so, but here you could, for example, now with a slider, you can you can test a bit more with this, but it will choose whatever is um, whatever is, is below that. The number I'm comparing, I'm comparing it with 100. If it's too high, if it's higher than 100, it will take the 100 as a percentage. So you could you see that here, when I go here, it's 96. Now the output here is 96. If I go over, then the output here is 137 percent. It doesn't humidity is like 100 percent as a maximum. And then it just takes 100 uh, percent. Okay, that's uh, actually it's a bonus, <laughs> bonus for today's grasshopper um, indoor comfort, indoor thermal comfort modeling. Just checking if I could find anything else here. No, not really. We we will look at that. We will. We will dedicate one or a few videos just on this stuff here. The legend, the colors, uh, the false start toggle. In the next video, we will look at this section here. Let's We start with this section. Let's see how far we get. There are some interesting components which a lot of people might not really use. So we have ladybug clothing by temperature. It gives you a suggestion what you could wear. <laughs> Pretty interesting. Uh, I will actually test that here. I want to know. Comfort statistics, convert the timestamp, ladybug data, date times, and so on. So there's quite an, quite interesting stuff in here. Humidity metrics, uh, relative humidity from dew point. So there might be actually items we can then refine our current models or current tests. This will not be the last time when we look at these thermal comfort models because it's all about comfort for ladybug. It's how to create comfort inside, indoor, outdoor, and with these additional tools, we will revisit some of the of the tools we already looked at. For example, the UTCI or the Pet Comfort. All right, that's it for today. Super short video, but I think we're getting closer to actually testing real model. See you next time.